Hey folks, welcome to another video. I hope I can make this very quick one because it's something rather simple, but I guess what was interesting. So this is an example for something that I was doing at work. So I, am in, I was integrating a third party API and I came across a situation which wasn't great. And we can take a look at this example in these documents. So what happens is in a specific case when calling an endpoint, there are some uh, properties, let's call it some items over here, when, which is supposed to be a collection. But what happens is when the collection is empty, we get the empty array. But if the collection actually has some items, instead of having an array of items, we have an object which has an internal items property and that one has the is an array. So this might work in a dynamically typed language. Not really in a strongly typed language like C Sharp, which is what we are using. So we need to do something about this. Uh, probably the easiest, I don't know, the easiest, maybe easiest would be to, to use something like a dynamic, or something like that. I don't know. But the solution I used was to make use of JSON converters uh, used with uh, system text JSON to keep our side of the code oblivious to this thing. In this case, we are only calling the endpoint and getting information, not writing anything. So that might simplify things a bit for us. So we just need to get information and like tweak it. If it's an array, read it as an array. If it's an object, read it as an object. So how can we do that? Let me go directly to the implementation and then we can check it. But as you could see over here, it's an array or an object with items inside. So implementing a JSON converter of I read only collection, and this is specific to what I usually do. I avoid I enumerable unless I want to make it clear that, that it's something that's lazy. Uh, otherwise, we get all those uh, warnings saying that possible multiple enumerations and stuff like that. So I tend to use re I read only collection because it's almost the same as I enumerable, but it has a count property. So normally it's not lazy, it is uh, in place, unless at least that's the usual contract we expect from an I read only collection instead of an I enumerable. Another alternative would be something like I read only list, which besides this would also have the possibility of indexing. But in this case, normally I use I read only collection because it's almost an I enumerable, so it's as simple as possible, but not lazy. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at how I actually implemented this. So I actually expected this to be more complex, so it was rather easy. So the important part is the read implementation. The write implementation is, for as I mentioned, we are just reading right now, so not really important. But the read implementation, where we get the reader, which actually points to the, the JSON we are trying to read. A type to convert, which is not important in this case because there is no polymorphism or anything involved. And a JSON serializer, JSON serializer options, which is the options associated with our serialization in this serialization stuff. So what we can do is take a look at the reader and check the next token that we are going to read for what it is. So if it's an array, we can immediately deserialize it as an array of T. If it's a, an object, we deserialize it as a wrapper, which is a record I created here privately because we don't need to use it outside, which has that items property inside, which in fact is an array. So by doing this, we can like tweak whatever comes, it will output an array only collection. So our code, the rest of our code doesn't care that this particular endpoint is doing strange things. So we hide this hack, which is what we are doing, uh, over here. Uh, if it's not one of these, it's kind of unexpected and we will throw an exception. Um, so, But for example, if it's null, it won't even call the converter because it will detect, oh, it, it's null, so we can immediately return null. So that's why I can do it just like this. 
some important points probably to take uh, into account. This theory is not irrelevant. So we cannot put, we could put other kinds of collections here, just not I really the only collection. If we put I really the only collection, what will happen? It will be basically a, an infinite loop because it will call the converter again and again and again and again, always trying to get the converter. So we can put other things here. We can put an array, a list, I don't know, uh, anything that implements I read only collection of T. Just not I read only collection of T to avoid the infinite loop. Uh, and that's why also the wrapper has a T array. As for the serialization, as I mentioned, it's not really important, but just in case I implemented it. Uh, so I'm just calling the serializer with the writer and the value. And this cast again is important, otherwise it would call again the converter with our read only collection. So we can just cast to object, we could cast to y enumerable, for example, uh, in this case, because we are not deserializing, we don't care actually the type, we just care that it's something that will serialize to an array in JSON. So by casting to object, it will make the serializer actually check. So what actual type is this? Okay, it's an array, it's a list, so we do it. So we can cast it like this, cast to other things, or we could, in fact, over here in serialize, I can just put object over here and then remove one of them. So in terms of how it works, it would be the same. I don't know if the generated, not sure if the generated code would be exactly the same, but probably it's not the same, it's close enough. But in terms of features, it would work. And that's it. So it was rather easy. It's a bit of a hack, sadly, but until it's fixed on the API side, uh, we need to get things working. And this was the way to get things working. And probably in the future, I'll talk more about JSON converters because I've been doing a lot of things with JSON converters. So just in case you're interested in seeing this working, I have a couple of examples, like with null, with an empty array, with an object with an empty array, with the array with actual items, and with the, the object with the items property. So we can just run it. And in case you're interested, this I I use the Spectre console to generate this these tables and stuff. So I have a, a video on the channel about Spectre console. So if you're interested, take a look. In any case, just we can see like when we deserialize a null, we get a null. When we deserialize an empty array, we get an empty array. When we deserialize an empty uh, wrapper, we get an empty array because we are all, always deserializing into an array. And also serializing as such, of course. And for the array, we get exactly the same. For the wrapper with items, we get the items extracted out of the object. And that's it. So very quick video, hopefully. I was quick enough. But it's something that we might need to do, do and as I needed to do. And I've been using JSON converters for a bunch of things. I'll talk again soon about it. But yeah, that's it. Hope it's useful. If not to do exactly the same thing, but to remind you that we have these extensibility points, which are nice to solve these kinds of problem, problems without messing all the code. We can just put something in one place and fix things. And then the rest of the code is like, OK, it works well, because this part is hiding the, the troubles from the rest. And that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, find it useful. And as usual, the usual YouTuber talk, if it was useful, drop a like, a comment. Uh, share with your friends, subscribe, all those kinds of things that help the channel grow. It would be super helpful. And thanks again for watching. See ya.